So what we're going to do today is we're going to set up an experiment tracking template using MLflow and Keras. So first things first, what we're going to do is we're going to create a Conda environment. So I'm creating an, uh, a virtual environment with Conda so that I can do all my installs and stuff in there. So that's done. Now I'm going to activate that environment. I actually have an automation to do that quickly. Experiment. Perfect. So now that I'm there, I'm going to install MLflow and scikit-learn. Installing MLflow, installing scikit Okay, so now that we have installed uh, MLflow and scikit-learn, I'm going to clone the MLflow repository. So that's what I'm doing here right now. Awesome. And now, just as a simple example, let's just run an example from the MLflow repository. So we're going to head out to the MLflow root folder. We're going to head out to examples, and we're going to run Python sklearn elastic yeah, wine. We're going to train, and we're going to give two parameters, the alpha parameter and the L1 ratio parameter, let's say 0 0.5, 0 0.6. And now we're running some training code. As you can see, these are the performance metrics. Let's run that again with different parameters. So let's say they're 0.3, they're 0.7. Perfect. Now that we have two examples to analyze, we can go to the UI from MLflow. So we run the UI from MLflow. And what we're going to get is now we just go to this. We we'll just go to this address, and what we get is this amazing table. And if I actually click here and hit compare, I can see the parameters that I use for these two different experiments, the metrics that I was analyzing, and I get these very nice interactive graphs that I can play around with. I can play around with the scatter plot, which in this case is comparing uh, the alpha parameter, the use of the alpha parameter, and the mean absolute error for the model for the, uh, I think it's a wide classification desk. And I could, you know, look at the other metrics as well, the R2, the R square or the root mean squared error metrics across alpha values, which is great. I can also go to contour plot and the parallel coordinates plot, which is by far my favorite plot to analyze experiments where we can see how a combination of parameters leads to a certain performance metric. And that's the super quick setup of MLflow. Okay, so we're gonna set up uh, an experiment tracking example with MLflow uh, directly here on our VS Code editor. So uh, I set up a Jupyter notebook for this to, to go through each step uh, or in an organized fashion, but I wanna go through in the VS Code editor so that we can uh, go through this together. So the first thing uh, that we're gonna do is we're gonna import we're going to import mlflow.tensorflow and we're going to set up auto logging for mlflow. So mlflow.tensorflow.autolog. And as we can see, GitHub yeah, Copilot already helps me out, so I don't have to be writing all the code. So now let's set up the parameters. So basically, I'm going to, I want to set up two parameters. So number of epochs would be 10 in this case, and then a batch size of 32. Now, I want to set up my data, set up the data. So for the data, I want to set up something very simple. So what I did was I did a synthetic example for a binary classification task, which is basically just uh, using the sklearn.dataset.makeGloves method, which makes up a fake classification uh, data set for us. That is super easy and uh, quick to run. So, to do that, we just import the, the framework that we need, which is make blobs. Yeah. And now x, y is make blobs. Perfect. Thank you very much. Let's do a thousand examples. Yeah. Perfect. Now that we have that, let's plot it. So to plot, we're going to use mapolib. So import mapolib.pyplot as p. And then with this, we're going to just plot scatter uh yeah thank you off oh, i love getting a profile and oh look at that uh, c map rep i don't know what that is let's leave it and uh, yeah okay so now get to that show and that will show us our data set and now we want to do 
eight from that split. Uh, we're gonna do the basic training test, like so our best. Thank you very much. We have copilot. That side would be the computer, why not? And now we set up the model. Yeah, so it's, it's gonna be a, a simple sequential model. Uh, yeah. Uh, I want to change that shit to be 128 units, and then uh, dense one, oh. dense one, and then model that activate the sigmoid, and then let's compile the model. So compile. That's exactly what I want. And now let's fit our model. To fit our model, that's exactly what I want. Thank you very much. And now let's uh, evaluate the model. Yep. Uh, that size is perfect. And now we're going to print the scores here just because and the first one is the loss and the second one is the accuracy. And when we do that and we run, let's take a look. Okay, so it shows the data. Perfect. And now it's running super quick because the data are simple. Yeah, and it prints the loss and the accuracy. Obviously, the accuracy is super high because it's a super simple data. Uh, obviously, the accuracy is super high because it's a super simple data set. And now let's change it up things a bit. Let's say 20 epochs and 32 batch size. And when we run it again, it should do the same. Great. Perfect. Awesome. So, so far our example is running perfect. Let's do a third example just because let's do 30 bucks and 16 bat size. Just so that when we are comparing in our NLflow UI, uh, we have enough you know, something to play around with. So 30 box train super quick. And now it's evaluating. Perfect. And now we can visualize that with the flow UI. Oh, it's in connection in use. So that's a bit weird because I don't have the connection in use at all. Maybe it's my to notebook. So let's okay, now we can just call in the flow UI to visualize our experiments. And we can click on this link. And we'll have our we have our experiments here. And the good thing about this is that you know we can just select our experiments. In this case, it's uh, these are the ones that I just ran, and we can see here the number of epochs, uh, the batch size associated. We can see how the accuracy varied as a function of batch size, and we can also see that for epochs, obviously, you know, more epochs, the model is going to have higher accuracy. Uh, the model had like bizarre accuracy because the data set was very simple and you know we can look at the parallel coordinates plot and take a look at take a look at our experiment so overall pretty cool pretty cool way to to visualize uh, to quickly visualize our experiments so yeah and also rules and that's pretty much it that's uh, experiment and that's pretty much it. That's experiment tracking with MLflow, a very simple example using Keras and a fake data set. And that's it. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And cheers.